Hey guys, um, in this demo I just wanted to kind of run through volumetric painting inside of 3D Coat. I've created three separate objects, one just a regular brick, another one is just a plank, a painted, a painted wood plank, and another one is just like a, a stone, like a granite where you've got that crusted raw stuff on the outside and then on the inside you've got more of that granite material. So here I'm just going to go ahead and start removing some material from the brick now you'll just kind of start to see that I'm revealing the inside of the brick material. This can be anything you want. Um, I just created something that was a little bit more kind of just granular, you know. Um, but you, if you don't like those, like the pattern as you're scraping away that material, you can just change your brush alpha to something a little smoother. And then you can actually like reduce the strength and then just kind of smooth out some of those as well. Now, many times when you break something like brick, you almost get this graininess to it. So um, you can achieve that as well. Um, simply just grab another alpha, something with a little bit more frequency to it. It doesn't have to be anything specific, um, but just bump up the strength a little bit. And, um, and then now as you start painting, you'll start to see, now it's like really grainy, almost like, like sand, you know. You can also, also like you, you can work off of the, um, the corners and start chipping it. Uh, you can even create cracks in the brick. So let me grab a brush um, with like a, a crack alpha. And let's just kind of start making some cracks in here. I'll make the strength a little bit stronger, I think. There we go. That one's super subtle. here I'll make I'll make one that's a bit more yeah there you go so it's actually got real depth in it because I'm actually cutting into it so I've got a layer that's my outer uh, brick material and then I've got my inside brick material and depending on the depth that you're painting this distressed or cracks or whatever it is as you're carving away you will go through one layer before you hit the other layer Here I'm changing the degree, so this is kind of nice. You've got these um, cool controls for the brush, but what the degree does is it biases toward one plane over another plane. Um, so if you have a really high level of degree, you can paint on one plane before it flips to the other plane. So, uh, but if you reduce that level, then as you start painting across two planes, it'll it'll just roll over to the other side. So you can see. Um, in this case, I hit it at 45 and it worked on both sides. So whatever works for the type of material or the limits that you want to put on your brush, you have full control of those. Also, we can kind of just really carve away um, here, let's just show you. Again, depending on the brush, you get the different type of material um, response, or, or maybe I should say the textural quality response. So changing again my alpha, now I can start to kind of reduce some of that as well. Now I do have my underlying texture already has a natural bit of like grit to it so it won't be super smooth um, but i can i can use the smooth function or the brush and that will smooth it or i can again just kind of go over what i already have that's coarse and then kind of smooth that out a bit And then on the board, I can, uh, now this is paint, so it's a very thin layer, and I can go ahead and just kind of start um, doing the same treatment. I've got a, like a pine wood under, underneath the paint, so as I start
carving away at the paint, I start to reveal that, that pine. If the cuts feel too clean and you don't want it to feel like very machined or just a clean cut, you can again use more of a grit to your, to your alpha and then uh, strengthen it a bit and then you can start to give it that very distressed uh, look and feel. We can add cracks as well, like you can just put scratches in the paint. Um, here, let, let's try. Strengthen it up a bit. It's all going to depend on your alpha that you're using as well. You can also just carve right into it and then you'll see that it's real depth and you can see that the paint, there is a thickness to the paint. You have full control of how much of that you want. But at any time, if you feel like you've done too much, you can always just press the control key and start bringing back what you've carved away. Here's some finer scratches. But it's really cool because I don't have to paint masks. I don't have to like find different textures to like fill in my scratches. I mean, this isn't perfect, but it's an interesting way. It allows me to carve only what I need to carve. And um, yeah, I can see the result of it, which is really cool. I just, just carve only what I need. And, um, and if I go too far, I can always bring back um, what, I, what I didn't like. All right, so let's move on to the stone material. So this is uh, like a raw rock, I mean, it's just like a, a rock material on the outside, but then as I start to carve into it, I start to reveal the, um, the granite material that's uh, inside. Now I didn't go, I should have made the crust a thicker depth. Uh, so I paint through a little ways before getting to the, um, to the granite. But I think this, it still shows the, um, the effect of it. It's pretty interesting. And then you can use different brushes that will give you a kind of a, that different uh, grit to it. So here you can see um, the original one has like a finer, grainier, almost like a sandy-like texture to it. And then the smoother brush kind of gave you uh, a much lower frequency. Yeah, you can even change the inside material. So here I just switched to another material. So you can, you can make different materials for that inner core. And then you can, uh, yeah, you just change them right here in that surface shader. But you can also change the tiling and the frequency of it as well. Yeah, definitely different attributes. It's, it's pretty dynamic. And then you can see I can, again, go back and adjust some of that um, high frequency and um, just change it after the fact. But the nice thing about this is I'm actually carving into the material. It's not like just painting a mask and then putting another material in. It's actually like the depth of it matches the material that you're revealing, if that makes any sense. But uh, it's just kind of... It's kind of cool. It's pretty interesting. I don't know that I could use this on everything, but definitely some organic things like, like these examples would work pretty, pretty well.
anyway, I hope um, this was helpful, and uh, yeah, you guys can play around with it and see what you think. All right, thank you.